well, I used to watch Sing in the Rain with my mom, but how do you make it rain inside? Like, And he turned to the person beside him and said, make it rain. Hey everybody, uh, this is Kurt Browning, or what's left of him, I'm in my house. Those are my old skates on the wall. And today we're gonna talk about music in skating. You know I'm gonna have fun. Canada's 21-year-old Kurt Browning was planning to attempt a quadruple toe loop, something never before achieved in competition. And this is the one he did in the warm-up. Quadruple toe loop, oh, perfect. When you see one done that easy, you wonder why it hasn't been done before in competition. This particular program wasn't a normal competition day because I was going to try this thing called the quad, which is four revolutions and nobody had, um, skaters had been doing it, Brian Orser could do it, um, but uh, nobody had officially been given credit for it and I was gonna go for it. It was the first jump in the program. So basically that's all I'm thinking about is if I can make history. Uh, Wayne Gretzky's agent, uh, Michael Barnett at the time had promised me a car if I could do this jump. So um, this young man that you're about to see skate, that's all he's thinking. Do this jump, get a car. I really wanted that car, yeah. When it came time to choose the music, um, I loved it. I loved the music. I grew up in the country. My father was an honest to gosh, real cowboy. And it made sense to me when I was performing, which it's great because as a, a performer, you want to connect with the music. I really thought it was choreographed very well because it starts kind of calm, as you can see, with the strings and then the little hints of cowboyism with the kicking of the dust. And, and then we roll into this big kind of career changing moment. Boom. That was the quad. It's very difficult to actually determine a triple and a quad. I don't know where the energy comes from because if, if it were me, I think I'd just sort of finish the performance right there. You can see me giddy up and goes, slap on the back of the horse. There was so many references to Western life. It was uh, a genius kind of choosing of the music, which allowed me to be in the performance, but not so caught up in it that I didn't do the jump as well. Browning and Coach Lewis Stong going over last minute details as he gets set to skate for gold and tap a comeback. Casablanca was uh, a movie that I enjoyed. And then the music was way bigger and more fleshed out than I'd ever dreamed. So uh, it was kind of like a, an eye opener to how great the movie is, but also how great the soundtrack is. I think this program is basically um, using the energy of the music and the speed of the skater and the intensity of the skater to get you to where you're going. And then later on in the program, when it slows down, we're into more like um, the combative energy of the program, uh, of the movie uh, and the sadness. <laughs> And this whole part was to make you feel that I wasn't a speaker, but I was a character. I was a person. And that was the main goal of that. Um, so that's that story. Um, great choice of music again. But as we move on to Singing in the Rain, now there's no rules. Um, I don't have to do the hard jumps. I can use props and, and I can, you know, jump on the bandwagon that is Gene Kelly and 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 just go one of my favorite memories is of my mother and i sitting in the living room watching those old sunday afternoon movies and they were great like every weekend we had a new adventure and a new fantasy and i like to pretend i was in the movie one of my favorite movies to pretend with was singing in the rain i'm singing in the rain just singing in the rain um, I was in a meeting with a man named John Brunton and we were going to do this TV special. And at the end of the meeting, he asked one more question, which was if there was ever anything you wanted to do on the ice, but it's impossible, what would that dreamscape be? And I'm like, well, I used to watch Sing in the Rain with my mom, but how do you make it rain inside? Like, and he turned to the person beside him and said, make it rain. So that's where this came from. So we had a big, huge, I don't know how many, at least one big, huge tanker truck filled with water in the parking lot of the arena. They brought all sorts of real sets to the arena to set up. They ran electricity underneath the ice so that we could have lighting uh, on the lampposts. 
the dresses and the props inside the windows were from that era. They were uh, vintage. The sun's in my heart and I'm ready for love. Let the so this was supposed to be a double jump because I didn't know how to jump with an umbrella. But once I got in the air, I thought, oh, I think I can do triples. So I just pulled in. So there was some weird magic going on that day. Uh, so this this piece of music, this this acting, this skating, the challenge of jumping with an umbrella live in front of an audience, um, the dance aspect of it, especially at the end of the live version, there's a lot of dancing, like toe tapping and dancing. Uh, it just said a little bit of everything that I love. Not too often that we get to talk about something specific within the sport, like the music and, and how it comes and, and what, why is it important and all that stuff. But also, um, like I said, to encourage any skater who's watching it to uh, watch plays, to listen to music, to take dance classes like I never did enough or hardly at all. So, um, and to in, can consider yourself more than just a skater more than just an athlete, but an artist and a performer and a dancer.